Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. This is a POV of the Lexus IS500. This is equipped with the V8 from Lexus. This might be the last V8 that we might ever see in the IS lineup or even in the whole entire lineup of Lexus. So I'm gonna give you guys a POV driving of this beautiful car. Put it in drive, we'll put in Sport Plus, give you guys a quick little bit of some revs. Red line is all the way to 7,000 RPM. And let's move on. So this is a real drive, so you gotta be careful here and there. You might slip out. So I've had this car for a week now, and I have to say I'm really disappointed with the sound that this car produces. So the, the muffle that you hear right now is pumped in through the speakers, and you can adjust it, you can lower the volume on how much fake exhaust you want in the cabin. Very quick. So this car produces around 471 horsepower from a naturally aspirated V8 5 liter. I want to say this is a novelty car. It's not really focused on competing with BMW's M3, M4. It kind of competes with the M340i, the C43 from Mercedes-Benz. It's pretty much a car like, hey, buy it, upgrade it on your own, put your exhaust, put your own turbo on it, leave us alone. We don't want to deal with the regulations. This isn't really a true F Sport car. It's only equipped with the V8 and that's it. So the brakes that you have on this car can also be found on the IS350 and the 250. So it doesn't really have tuned suspension from the factory. It doesn't really have performance brakes as the RCF has. So I just gotta keep in mind, this isn't really like a track ready car. It's more of a daily commuter with the special V8. I wanna say this interior is pretty much outdated. You can find this on the Lexus IS from 2015 to 16, but you're not really buying it for the tech. I'm averaging around 11.4 liters per 100 kilometers which is B6 standards in a way, but I'm driving this in eco mode the whole time. You have eco mode, you have Sport S and Sport Plus, so it increases the RPMs, makes the throttle very responsive. This car is perfect for the weekends. I wouldn't say this is a perfect daily commuter. some pops and cracks from the exhaust but all I'm hearing is pumped in engine sounds from the speakers I wish they had like a package where you would pay let's say 3,000 for a, a sport exhaust so last night I was in Toronto and I saw a Lexus IS and I thought it was the V8 from the front because it was the same color as this black but then I went to the back it was a 350, so they really look identical. The only way to tell is the quad exhaust tips that this one offers. The steering wheel is very light. What do you guys think? Do you think this car is worth 77,000 Canadian? Or do you think you're better off getting an M340i, C43, or maybe just the Lexus IS350 in general? Maybe 250, you know? Everyone has their own preferences, but I would just go with the 250 or the 350. You're burning less gas, looks the same, kind of sounds the same, not really, but in a way from the outside. station all the way I'm driving these days. 
So we can also move the car into manual mode. We can downshift. We have paddles. I feel like there's a delay with the paddles. I feel like it's like the computer doing upshift and a downshift for me. Nice years passing by. Very nice. There's so much potential with this car. It's crazy. The tech is very outdated in my opinion. It's very slow. It legs a lot. There's a track pad that you can use. It's not the best in my opinion. So the paint color on this is called Caviar. But I'll just call it black. We have another M Sport badge down below. So in different sunlight, you can see the little pigments. We have our 19 inch rims with our massive Lexus brake calipers. Regular suspension that you would find on the IS 350. The iconic Lexus daytime running LED at the top. Three high projector beams. Massive Lexus grill. All the Lexus safety features behind the emblem right there. The camera at the top for parking assist. I love how the grill is blacked out. It gives it a more stealth look. Something to know with this model is the front hood scoop is a little longer, making room for the V8 for cooling. But overall, it's pretty much the same length as the base 250 and the 350. So this pretty much competes with the C43, the M40i, not really the M3 and the M4. Another disappointing feature is the legroom. I am not even gonna try. I am 5'9". I would say this is a coupe in a way. You can't really sit someone in the center, but uh, all the materials are very plush and soft. The whole car is in red pretty much, even the door panels. Very nice. Stepping in, the first thing you notice is more red. Something that I don't like is my knee always digs in the panel right here, it really hurts. But uh, let's power this VA for you guys. Wow. So the interior is pretty much a letdown. It reminds me of the Lexus IS from 2015, 2014. It's a typical climate control down below. The tablet like display, which is very, very slow. You have a trackpad right here, vibrates back, giving you feedback toggling between we have our menu honestly it's not the best you're buying this car for the v8 and the performance not really the infotainment but it's a letdown that this is a seventy-seven thousand dollar car and you're getting a 2015 infotainment display all the newer lexuses have top of the line navigation high-res displays but you get the v8 though i guess right touch response is very laggy I would say you're better off using your iPhone. We have our compass, our climate controls down below. So this comes with heated and ventilated seats, perfect for summer. Let's turn that on. Another switch that you guys might be using if you were to buy this cart is the Eco and Normal and Sport Plus modes. Cart is in Eco mode right now, Sport S and Sport Plus. So what that does is increases the throttle and the response, turns traction control off. Eco mode, on the other hand, is pretty much meant for normal highway cruising. As you guys can see, me using Eco mode on the highway, I've averaged around 11.5 liters per 100 kilometers on Eco mode. I have no idea what V8 in the world comes equipped with an Eco mode that has this good of a fuel economy. We can toggle between our digital gauge cluster, fuel economy how much range we have on a single tank so this car is full right now it's saying we have 400 kilometers our oil temperature we have g-force if you were to track this car our tire pressure the center one moves from the right to the left kind of reminds me of the lexus lfa in a way steering wheel is very light and responsive paddle shift is if you were to drive this in manual mode you can upshift and downshift 
but I find like the response is very sluggish. I feel like the computer is doing it behind the scenes and just putting the input in. More red all the way around, soft materials. Something that I'm very disappointed about this car, it comes with a V8 and it sounds horrible. So I'll rub it for you guys in Sport Plus. Red line is 7,500 RPM. The sound that you just heard is pretty much fake and it's pumped in through the audio. And there is the switch right here. You can adjust the volume of the fake engine sound inside the cabin. I guess it helps out with people's egos while they're driving a V8. I just don't understand why Lexus couldn't equip this model with a sports exhaust where it popped and cracked while you were to upshift. Can't we really do anything about that? I wanna show you guys. So under the hood, five liter V8, producing 471 horsepower, no turbos, nothing. Full V8, this might be the last V8 I ever see in my life. Imagine this came with a turbo. <laughs> We're producing around 600 horsepower. Let me show you guys the trunk space while I'm at it here. Plenty of room in the back. Something to note that it comes with a spare tire. That's a nice little feature. Now power operated, manually you have to close it. Just a letdown with the exhaust. That's my only big issue with this car right now is the exhaust. It needs a better exhaust. With performance, it's very responsive on the highway and city driving. It pushes you back into the seat. You can feel the acceleration, but you just want more of a performance car in a way that just the sound isn't there for me. And another thing before I end this video is, this isn't really an F Sport car. It doesn't have the F Sport division suspension, the upgraded brake calipers, the upgraded chassis. This is pretty much a base IS350 with the V8 in it. And they're like, here, do whatever you want with it. That's pretty much the meaning of this car. Put a V8 in, you tune it, you put the exhaust, leave me alone. That's my view on it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Remember to like and share. Take care guys.